Hello, uh, my name's Stephen Bright. Uh, welcome to the first of what will be three videos we've put together during this um, lockdown period to try and use that time constructively to provide some um, CPD engineering notes for, for engineers, engineering students, um, also to provide a, a broad introduction to EasyBridge and what it can do and where we hope to take it in the future. Part two of these videos will be the, the technical content really aimed at engineers, but the first and third videos are very broad, basic introduction to how EasyBridge works, what it does and um, such. So first of all, why was EasyBridge conceived and, and what is it? Well, EasyBridge is a ladder bridging system. Um, so the nearest equivalent thing being used at the moment are these crevasse crossing ladders. Um, often used on glaciers. So these are four, typically four meter ladders, long ladders lashed together to bridge gaps up to about six meters. By contrast, EasyBridge is a purpose design system. So we've come up with something where we use one and a half meter, very portable ladders to achieve spans about 18 meters. So in this video we've got running here on the left, that was a 12 meter gap crossed by um, a mid-sized EasyBridge. So to understand EasyBridge first, it's worth looking at these existing systems and understanding them a little more first. So first off, the, the this nearest equivalent of these crevasse crossings, six meter span, um, portable ladders, but once in place, they tend to have very limited portability because they rely on rope safety lines. So once those are set up and anchored in the ground, these things tend not to be moved. Um, very slow crossing times, we have to walk across the rungs one at a time, so notoriously dangerous. Um, very reliant on rope safety lines. So we, we use those safety lines partly as a handrail to, give the, to help with your balance, but secondly, that is the ultimate fail safe if we slip off those ladders. The next step up from that, the next evolution are these rope crossing systems that achieve much longer spans. Um, very long spans can be achieved with these. Problem with these is we require prior access to both sides to set up and anchor those ropes before we can use it. Um, that can be a significant constraint. Also, potentially, depending on the relative levels of those two anchorages, we could have a very slow crossing where we have to pull ourselves across all the way. So potentially very slow. Now, to understand the sort of engineering a bit behind EasyBridge, first look at the, 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 the engineering principles of these simple crevasse crossings. Now, these are very simple beam structures. So they're supported at the two ends, typically around six metres apart. And this, the ladders then just essentially form a very simple beam. Now, a simple beam, if we look at this exaggerated deflected shape diagram around the middle, we can see that what happens there is the, the top surface of that beam um, shortens as we load it, goes into compression. The bottom surface of that beam stretches as we load it, so it goes into tension. So opposing stress blocks um, top and bottom of the section. So if we look at that in terms of the ladders that we're using on these crevasse systems, that's a view on a, a typical ladder style. The style are the main rails on the ladder sides, the main um, bits of meat, if you like, on the ladder that give them their strength. So we're looking at a stress block which is increasing to, to a peak at the top surface in compression and then increasing to an opposite peak in tension on the bottom surface. Interesting point to note there is the bending stress diminishes towards zero at the neutral axis, which tends to be in the middle of the section. On these crevasse crossings, a little bit more, the, the bindings that we, we generally have to use add a little bit of complexity. Um, but generally, the, the general rule there is the longer you can make that overlap, the better, the less the load that they'll be imparted on the rope. So we try and, but you try and maximise that length of overlap wherever you can. So what is EasyBridge and how does it work by comparison? Well, EasyBridge is still a ladder deck, um, but this time it becomes, we, we, we add ropes and mass and we, we tension this structure up so it becomes a very deep truss. So it's no longer just a simple beam. We add these ropes, um, we, we, we then connect those ropes back to the ladder deck via these mass stays at third points in this example. And what that does is provide sort of intermediate support to the ladders in the deck. So if we look at the bottom illustration, the ladders are still rigidly supported at the two ends, probably 18 metres apart there. But what we've done is where those masts come in and where those rope, rope anchors come in, they, they tend to act a bit like a sort of spring support to the ladders forming the deck. Um, so what we've what we've roughly done there, and this is very crude simplification, but we've 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 taken essentially three six metre crevasse crossings, attached them end to end and created now an 18 metre bridge. So if we imagined it as three beams, you're not too far off um, what the fundamentals of EasyBridge are. 
The reality, though, is EasyBridge is, is at its at its core is a truss. So uh, what is a truss? Well, a truss is easy to imagine as just a very deep beam. So most beams tend to be, we tend to make them as shallow as we possibly can for various reasons. But if you imagine a very deep one, um, a very thick plank of wood relative to its span, if you like, what we've got going on there is compression still on the top surface, tension on the bottom, but we've got a lot of surplus material in the middle that we don't really need. If we remember that stress block that diminished to sort of zero in the middle, we, we can cut away a lot of that material and, and the structure would still be fine. So a truss is really... Um, an engineer's attempt to try and take away as much material as we ever dare um, than just leave the absolute bare minimum skeleton in the middle. And that's exactly what EasyBridge is. It's a truss that's supported at the two ends um, and the ropes are anchored into the ladders at the two ends. They're not anchored into the ground. And what that means is that when we stretch those ropes at the bottom, um, in return, they compress the ladders in the top. So it's still like a beam compression and tension but very widely spaced now, much more efficient than we would ever achieve with a beam. And what does that mean? It really means we, we, we achieve massive weight saving. So EasyBridge typically weighs five kilograms per meter of span. If we compare that to permanent civilian sort of footbridges, they typically weigh around 750 kilograms a meter. So a significant step change saving in weight. Um, there is a cost involved in that in that a permanent footbridge obviously can deal with as many people on that deck as can possibly fit on there. It's designed for very high live loads. EasyBridge, by contrast, is designed for, for, for very fixed controlled live loads. And we do that by using the trolley. That means we can't fill that ladder up with people end to end. The idea is just to send one person across at a time. So we don't have the live load capacity that you'd normally expect in a permanent footbridge. But by return, we can save so much more on the structural weight. Now, a similar principle is used in this modular footbridge we see at the bottom here. Now, this is in some ways the nearest equivalent system on the market to EasyBridge. So this, this comes in at 12 and a half kilograms a meter, so rough, just over double the weight of EasyBridge. Um, but similar in many ways. Um, but the key thing we're trying to achieve with EasyBridge that differentiates the two is we've always tried to set out to minimize the module size to make EasyBridge highly portable, as portable as it possibly can be. So EasyBridge uses one and a half meter ladders that weigh seven kilograms typically. That truss footbridge would be based on four and a half meter modules at 56 kilograms each. So we're then, in terms of the modules, achieving a 90% reduction in, in, in ish in weight and volume, basically. So that's the, the key objective we, we came out with the bridge. So comparing the two systems in more detail, um, this infantry assault footbridge, as it's known, a maximum span of 30 meters, very respectable. Um, EasyBridge can achieve 18 meters currently, but the key thing there is this, is this step change in module size and weight. Cavass crossings are broadly similar to EasyBridge. Module size is usually four meters, but it doesn't have to be. Um, typically 14 kilograms. So even there, we've EasyBridge, by using shorter ladders, we've made it lighter and more portable. Now, another key fundamental basic of EasyBridge is, is clever use of support conditions. Now, if we look at an EasyBridge operation, if you haven't seen this before, EasyBridge um, is built entirely from one bank. So we build it all on that far bank. We launch it into position to reach this home bank. Um, actually, home bank and far bank would probably be the other way around in that case, actually. But we build it on one bank and, and boom it out to the other, and then we turn it over and cross on the trolley. Now, there's four key support conditions in that cycle, which this slide attempts to explain in more detail. So we've got the photo extracts from that launch, first of all, and then some model simplifications of that. So the first one is launch, where we boom this bridge out from one bank to the other as a cantilever truss. We then touch down on the far bank, and this bridge is then simply supported at the two ends again, but upside down. We then start to turn the bridge over. So it's on its side for a while, and we'll look at that. That is a Virendil truss. In order to support itself in that case, we call that a Virendil truss. Next example, when we, when we finally get the bridge to position, we put it down and it's in service. And this is a simple supported truss like the ones we've been looking at so far. So looking at each stage in more detail, cantilever launch, we've got some pictures there of, of 15 to 18 meter easy bridges. And I think we can see the obvious analogy there with tower crane booms. I don't think there's any need any explanation there that the, the ropes are being used efficiently, just like in a tower crane to um, restrain the ladders. 
So what's going on here? Well, obviously, as we as we push the bridge over the gap, it could potentially seesaw into the gap and fall over. So what we do is we use the, the operator's weight. That's enough to counterbalance that bridge and stop it falling into that gap. Um, in return, while, while that's happening, the ropes are falling into tension to, to support the nose of the bridge as it booms out. And in return, as those ropes are anchored into the ladders, the ladders have to, maintain, have to offer an equal and opposite compression to counterbalance that, that rope tension. Next is touchdown, where the bridge um, touched down on the far bank. So here's some photos of 15 to 18 metre spans. First thing to note there is obviously extreme curvature. So it's no surprise to learn that this is a very onerous low case for Easy Bridge. The reason for that is we have ropes that are at this particular stage doing nothing. They're still attached to the structure, but uh, the structure is supported at the two ends. So the top surface now is in compression. Ropes don't offer anything or can't contribute to compression. So they just fall slack and redundant. So this structure has to support itself entirely um, from its own, entirely from the ladder section, nothing else, just to resist its own self weight. That means we have pure bending in that ladder deck, and that really is what limits Easy Bridge at the moment to 18 metres maximum span, that particular low case. Um, another interesting one is, is to carry Easy Bridge around. We tend to carry it around in this orientation also, just very easy to carry uh, that way up, and also means it's ready to launch as soon as we drop it into position. The next stage of building Easy Bridge is turning it on its side. So uh, we can see some pictures there up to 18 metres, and an obvious analogy there are these rear and deal truss foot bridges, quite common. So these are these are bridges that have no X bracing or diagonal members in them, are just a framework of perpendicular elements. That's exactly what's happening with our ladders at that stage. And what does that do? Well, that sets up uh, bending moments that can be quite onerous in the ladder rungs. Now, um, rear and deal moments are, are dependent on uh, f uh, derived from shear so they actually increase towards supports conversely the axial loads and the styles to set up the compression and tension in the styles is just like a beam so that that peaks at mid span but quite complicated sort of bending behavior going on there while it's on its side next stage is in service once we've got it in position we, we we have it simply supported again at the two ends and here we see pictures of an 18 meter bridge in position and a 10 and a half meter bridge in position at this stage we're restoring this trust behavior where um, we, we were using the rope tension once again so here's a bit more detail on that this is a 10 and a half meter bridge so as this operative goes from one side to the other um, we're mobilizing, first of all, local bending in the deck, just like crevasse crossings, because uh, the ladders are supported at two ends and via those ropes, essentially at the intermediate midpoint. But this, the, the operative crosses halfway between that, for instance. So we have to um, resist that load as local bending in that ladder still. So from the land support to the mast in the first instance, and then subsequently when he moves to the right hand side, from the mast to the next land support, local bending still exists. Um, next thing, we've obviously mobilized trust behavior now. Um, so we have tension in those ropes counterbalanced by compression and deck. So both these low cases are present for Easy Bridge to work. But the reason Easy Bridge is so successful at, at being very efficient structurally is that we always use the ropes and the ladders in their optimum configuration. So during launch, we're putting the ropes in tension and the ladders in compression when the bridge is that way up. We then flip the bridge the other way up um, for operation and again the ropes fall into tension and the ladders in compression so it really is the optimum solution for those two low cases and this is the final slide on this 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 sort of general introduction and this sort of shows two extreme cases of that so the first picture is an 18 meter well actually that's not a quite an 18 meter cantilever but it's it's the best picture we could find um so that's that's a long launch cantilever and the, the lower picture there shows the bridge in position an 18 meter span in that case and i think we can clearly see in both cases the ropes would fall into tension and the ladders in compression so that really is the secret of making easy bridge reach so far both in service and in launch using the ropes in their most effective orientation by turning the bridge um, inverting the bridge to, the, to its optimum position so that's a, a very brief introduction to EasyBridge, what it does and how we do it. Um, the next two um, videos will give much more information technically and um, certainly a lot more information about the product later on. I hope that gave something useful. Um, please continue to watch the other videos if you want to learn more. Thank you very much.